Hey guys, I'm Eddie, founder of Ulu Yoga. And I'm Cody, Ulu Yoga, lead teacher trainer. We're going to go through the top ways to maximize any yoga teacher training. So, number one is teaching practice. So, yes. when I did my yoga teacher training, we didn't spend enough time when I finished the course and I was not ready to teach at all. So when I designed the Ulu Yoga course, I made that one of the core components, right? And so students practice teaching every day. Uh, they do a complete class each week, and when they finish, they're ready to go out uh, and succeed professionally. And so uh, when you are looking around and uh, trying to decide which course to take, call them up and, and ask them and find out specifically how much time do we spend teaching uh, and is it in big groups? Is it one-on-one? -on -one? And how many students are there? How many instructors are there? Uh, will I get like feedback on this every day? Or is it gonna be three minutes of me like teaching in a group and the instructor's like, okay, good job. What do you think? Yeah, I think the same could be said for if you're doing an online teacher training as well, making sure that uh, if you are going to be teaching online that you're getting reviewed, that there is almost like a peer review system or one of the teachers are going to be having a look at the content that you're going to be creating. Because, yeah, at the end of the day, when you walk away from a teacher training, you want to be able to teach. Number two would be making sure that it is a Yoga Alliance registered training. Um, when you get certified by any yoga teacher training, you want to make sure that that certification is connected to a regulatory body such as the Yoga Alliance. This means that it has standards, that the teacher training that you are doing is going to be something of value to you and is something that you can take into becoming a professional yoga teacher. Mm. People check for this uh, and if it's not Yoga Alliance, then it might be something that is uh, regulatory in your country or state. But definitely make sure that you check that first and again, get on a call with your teacher training or potential teacher training and see if they have that. Sure. Um, there's also, you have to watch out for these fake Yoga Alliance uh, organizations. They, they call themselves like Yoga Alliance, you know, Australia, Yoga Alliance International. If you go to, I don't want to be like, you know, make a commercial about Yoga Alliance, but like you go to their website and then compare that with the other ones uh, and you'll see clearly what is and is not uh, Yoga Alliance. And, and as Cody said, you know, there are a few other uh, reputable organizations, but Yoga Alliance is like the biggest, most widely accepted one that it's been around for the longest time. And uh, it had developed a bad reputation at one point for being a bit too easy um, to make a, a yoga school. Uh, and over the last you know, five years, that they've really raised the standards, which was a lot of work to restructure the program and, and make sure everything you know, was up to their new standards. Uh, but we did it, and I'm happy we did it, because uh, it's a better course now because of it. 100%. What do you think would be number three? Um, make sure that the course that you choose has a complete online version, right? Um, because look, uh, we were doing teacher trainings every month uh, for seven years, and then COVID happened, and we had to go online. Um, and it was hard. Uh, and you know, we recorded all the classes, and then we had to re-record them to keep improving the quality. We had to change platforms, and it was a lot of work. But after two, over two years, uh, our online course is awesome. And it, yeah, it has helped us um, with our in-person trainings now. And so we have students uh, do some of these modules online so that when they arrive to the course, they're uh, prepared uh, and they don't just show up, what's yoga? <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, and then they've already had a chance to meet each other because we do the live classes, we have a live chat, and then when you finish the course, uh, you can go back and watch all of these modules online. And if whatever, if there's another COVID situation or you get sick or your plans change, you can just switch online and do the whole course online, right? What yeah. do you think? Yeah, definitely check that any teacher training that you are going to be doing uh, has an online version or at least some sort of online presence. Uh, this means that you know that they're kind of in with the times, that if you do have to 
for some reason be delayed in your plans of doing an on-site training, that they have an online course available for you. And this also means that there's just extra content and an extra online community. When you complete any training, whether it's online or on-site, then you still get to be interactive and engaged with, whether it's with your fellow students or the teachers. I constantly have people still sending me messages and questions about their own personal yoga training or about being a yoga teacher and I find this interaction really 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 nice so checking this with whatever school that you're going to be going with is again also I agree with Eddie an important factor yeah like when I did my training they're like here's a list of books to read and that was it and I read the books and I learned a lot from it but compare that to what we have now here is the complete course online here's everything that you're learning in these you know the modules as part of this online course uh, you jump on these uh, chat groups we've got like a thousand people who are doing the course online and so you're just immediately plugged into this massive global community you have any question on this chat group it's answered like in minutes. It's really cool to see how all the students are like supporting each other. Uh, what do you think would be number four? Choose a yoga teacher training that offers a variety of styles. Now, if you've already been practicing yoga and you've tried a variety of styles, you know which one you want to do, okay, choose that course. Or maybe you're curious about other styles and so choose <laughs> a multi-style course. Um, you get to do hatha, vinyasa, ashtanga, yin, aerial, acro, sup yoga. And you may be surprised uh, with something new and discover like, I really love this. I'm really passionate about this. You know, I've got this uh, untapped uh, um, uh, passion, which, you know, I want to explore and, you know, you can change your life. It, it's happened. You know, people do aerial and they're like, oh my God, this is so great. I want to become an aerial teacher. I want to, that's happened with me, right? Um, when I did my first uh, yoga teacher training, I had no idea what, <laughs> what the different styles were. And I just like clicked, okay, that one looks good. And then I found out it was a Hatha course. And then when I learned out like, oh, I've actually been practicing vinyasa yoga for three years and I didn't even realize it. So I canceled that, lost my refund, and signed up for an Ashtanga course. And that was also too intense. I really would have rather had done a, a multi-style teacher training. And that's why I created the program that I did. What do you say? Yeah. I you did a multi-style course. I did a multi-style course for that reason actually because I just did not know what I wanted to do. I knew that I did not know much about yoga. I didn't know what each style meant or what each style was. And so I felt like the best way for me to get completely involved is to jump in and just do it all and have a little taste of everything. And through that I learned that I really like vinyasa and hatha. And then I also went on to learn that I liked yin and aerial. Um, and so if you know, like Eddie said, go with what you know. But if you don't know, honestly, the best thing to do is choose a multi-style and get in contact with people again and speak about it and say, what do you offer? What are the styles that you have? And the more styles they have, usually the better, especially when you're starting out as a yoga teacher. What's number five? Number five is making sure that the school goes into a variety of topics, not just yoga asana. So when I did my teacher training, again, one of the things that I really loved is that they had anatomy. I loved learning about the human body and learning how the muscles function, learning what's actually happening in each asana on an anatomical level. And not all schools offer this. And even the ones that do, some of them don't go in depth. So making sure not only that they have it, but ask them questions about it. How deep do you go into anatomy? How deep do you go into philosophy? Some schools don't go very deep into the eight limbs of yoga, or maybe they don't touch on something like Ayurveda. And if this is something that interests you and you want to get the depth of the yogic philosophy or even the meditation, then ask and make sure that this school has that depth. What do you think? Uh, I don't want to put down the teacher training that I did and it was great. I love my instructors, you know, I have a lot of respect for them, but it was still kind of new and their anatomy section sucked. It was practically non-existent. They like showed us some like pictures. <laughs> like, are you for real? We get some students, you know, who have done other teacher trainings, like maybe they've just done a Hatha or a Vinyasa course and they want to do a multi-style, so they're doing the 200 hour again. 
and they'll come to us and be like, wow, I, mean, I didn't even know like yoga was about meditation because, you know, in my training, you know, all we did was like, you know, as asanas, right? Yeah. Which is just shocking to me. <laughs> Number six. Number six is a variety of instructors. Now, there's people offering yoga teacher trainings where it could be like just one person, right? Um... You can't be a master of every subject. Um, that's why when you do a, a yoga course, you need a variety of instructors. And uh, each one can be a specialist, you know, in that uh, subject. You have like one instructor who is master of philosophy or anatomy or analytics. And what's cool about uh, Ulu Yoga is, you know, we've been doing this training for so many years. We've worked with so many instructors. And uh, you know, we have a lot of people to call upon to, if we're doing courses in Thailand or Bali, you know, or online. Especially online is great because I get to kind of pick and choose like the really best instructor for the, the best uh, topic and put them together. That's why the online course is so awesome. When I did my course, I got really like, bored with just having one instructor because the, the other one wasn't available. He came kind of in the second week and that offered like a, such like a, a revitalization for all of us. So that's why I, I like to have, uh, you know, a, with each day, you know, maybe two or three uh, instructors coming on. At the same time, you don't want a course with too many instructors because then sometimes you they are offering a competing and conflicting information that confuses the student. So it's good to have a course that has a variety of instructors, but it's also good that they've been working together for a long time so that they have a shared, you know, value. Uh, as the, the lead trainer on a lot of these courses, uh, I notice that there's things that I'm really good at and that there's things that other teachers are really good at. And it's always good to let people teach and share the knowledge that they're expert on and that they love teaching about. So I really love anatomy, vinyasa, and flow. And so those are the things that are my main topics whenever I teach on a training and if I do things on an online course. Um, there's other teachers whose main topics are philosophy. Some teachers' main topics are deeper into the analytics. Some teachers' main topics are yin or Ayurveda. And so going with the experts and knowing that you're getting taught by experts is usually shown when there are a variety of teachers because this means that the energy is being shared. On the point of energy, it also means that you get to feel teachers' energies and different energies inside the training. So you might vibe with one teacher more than the other, which is okay. But having a variety of teachers means that that is an option. Not just getting stuck with one teacher who maybe you kind of vibe with, but it would be nice if there was a little bit of a mixed energy. And getting this different opinion and different understanding of yoga, for me, is the point of yoga because you get to see the different perspectives. So a definite thing to check that there are more than two or three teachers on the teacher training that you are enrolling into. Three to five, something like that. Three to five. Number seven. Okay, number seven. Choose a school with uh, testimonials, right? Now, not just testimonials, because you can do one course, right? And you get like five students to do these amazing testimonials. You put them on your website and you're like, wow, these school must be amazing. They got these testimonials. Um, how far back do these testimonials go? Because maybe they had one good course and they just kind of cherry picked these things. But if you see this school has got like several years uh, worth of testimonials and not just testimonials, but go on like uh, Google reviews or any uh, yoga alliance or any platform that you can find where the school is listed and that there are reviews and that they aren't uh, reviews that the schools are able to remove. And so if you cannot find like one single negative review about the school, I don't know, man. Uh, I wouldn't trust that. Um, what do you think? Yeah, I think uh, a school's reputation is really important and also history. Because if they've been around for a long time, it also means they're good. This means that the students really like them, that there is value being added, and that they have history in doing teacher trainings. I know that as we progressed, we got better. We got so much better. Definitely. Each teacher training felt better. I felt better as a teacher. Their organization felt better. Even with the online course, our online course has gotten better every single time. So having a school that has a history of at least like five to seven years or even more 
is really, really powerful because then you know that it's got a good reputation, it's got a good background behind it, it's practiced, and the knowledge and content that you're going to get and the way that you're going to get it is a practiced experience. Yeah, I mean, running teacher trainings is really difficult. You have a lot of different people coming from different backgrounds. Uh, you know, some are positive or negative, and you go through so many uh, unexpected challenges on, on so many different levels. Every training that we do, uh, we learn and grow from like some new challenge. And like this, the students this month, uh, they're really happy w with what we're doing. And I'm like, you know what? We put that particular class exactly there instead of there or there because we've done it 20 times and we've learned through trial and error that this works the best. Number eight. Number eight is checking to make sure that they have advanced programs and continued education programs because this means, again, that the school is putting in the extra effort. It also means that they have that extra bit of knowledge, so they're not teaching you at their capacity. So if you're doing a 200-hour training, see if they have a 300-hour training. This is also nice because then you can stay with the school. It means that there's place to grow with it. It also means that afterwards, whether you're doing an online or an on-site, you can continue to grow. You can learn a yin teacher training. You can do something like you said, where you may start off thinking Ashtanga is too advanced for you, but then you get better by doing a 200-hour multi-style training, and then you realize, actually, I'm ready. I could do something like a 50-hour Ashtanga training or a 100-hour Ashtanga training, and then you go and you do that training online or on site. I mean, I totally agree with you. Uh, choose a school that's offering 200, 300, 500 hours. If the school's only offering a 200-hour program, that says to me that they're kind of inexperienced, honestly. And then uh, in addition to that, I would choose a school that offers uh, retreats as well. And because you can do yoga teacher trainings and you can be a really serious instructor and give like a really uh, good uh, technical training, right? But if you're also doing retreats, it's a very different experience. And that shows to me that uh, those instructors are able to kind of connect with people on like a deeper, more personal level. And when I was doing my first, uh, when I was giving my first uh, trainings, that's really how it was. I was really good technically, and people were coming to me with uh, more like emotional problems, and I didn't know how to deal with that. And that's why I started building, you know, a, a wider, uh, you know, variety of instructors to uh, accommodate all the different students that we have. Almost close to number ten now. What is number nine? Number nine awesome location yes. okay now you were saying yesterday um, which I hadn't considered before um, to choose a uh, yoga teacher training that is uh, outside of your normal life um, going to Thailand or Bali for instance uh, you forget all about uh, your friends and family and work and you're transported into like another world which is fresh and new and you can really focus on your courses as well if it's some kind of paradise location like Thailand or Bali you know it's, it's so amazing it's so inspiring and life-changing just to come and be here at a place like this and then if you can do something like a transformative yoga teacher training on top of that it can be like the best experience of your life right and yeah. so many of our students say this. 100%. I feel like this is something for me that was also really important, is going somewhere different, going somewhere where I didn't feel like I have connections and where could I get an extra experience of not just going and doing a yoga teacher training and that's it, but going and experiencing a new culture, hearing the sounds of the birds, being yeah. with the ocean. Yeah. It's so, so beautiful. Um, and then even when you're choosing an online training, checking that that online training has exotic locations. I know it's a little bit sneaky, but this means that when you're with these guys, whoever it may be, you have potential of going to the places that they are at. So like you said, if they have trainings in Bali or Thailand or Costa Rica or wherever it may be, then there's a big potential that when you decide to do your on-site teacher training or take the online into something more personal, um, you can go somewhere beautiful that you've always wanted to go. Let's say that there are 20 schools on Kofangang and they're all like, come to Kofangang, it's like, you know, this paradise island. But where exactly on the island are they? Are they like 
on the beach? You know, are they a five minute walk from the beach? Are they a five minute bike ride from the beach? Is that a motorbike or is that a bicycle? You know, and then the whole like conditions, you know, of the shallow, you know, uh, you know, does it have screens or windows? Is it open air? You know, are there mosquitoes? Is there wind and rain? You know, there's so many little details that can make a, a massive difference uh, in your yoga experience. Yeah, and it's all about your yoga experience. And this, I think, leads us to the final, final point that we're going to make. Number 10, choose a school that touches your heart. It comes down to really what's Ulu Yoga all about. So when I came up uh, with the name Ulu, I chose something that had no meaning in English um, because I wanted something like Om. Uh, which is a universal and anyone can just uh, take to heart and uh, find their own interpretation of, um, which goes in line with having a multi-style program. And we're not just teaching one specific thing in one way, you know, it's a variety of things. And then I got into aerial yoga and it became like my life's passion. Um, later, I found out Ulu means to fly, you know, it means owl. Owl is like a, a yoga a bird who just like sits there and he's able to like see through the darkness it has this like night vision which is like peering through like the ignorance you know of the soul in a way and it also means like whirlwind it, it means crazy and it's kind of how a multi-style is you know it's got this whirlwind of styles uh, Ulu also means uh, the end of the land and that's where um, like uh, uh, the, the body can pass on and transform and connect with the divine. Uh, Ulu, we've also chosen, uh, it, it means a universal love and understanding, uh, which kind of, I think, goes with our whole, like, you know, global uh, open-minded philosophy towards life in general, right? I think more than anything, go with something that feels right. You'll have a feeling in your heart or your stomach, an intuitive feeling. You can check all the logistical things that we've just mentioned. But going with that gut, going with that heart is going to be the guiding light that's going to show you where it is that you're meant to go and where it is that you want to go. And so finally, to recap the top 10 things that you can do to maximize any yoga teacher training are... Okay, number one was teaching practice. Make sure the school covers enough time with teaching practice and then you can finish the course actually ready to go out and teach a class and succeed professionally. Number two was certification. Uh, choose a school that's either Yoga Alliance or some other reputable organization and not just something that they've made up or some kind of knockoff imitation Yoga Alliance, right? Number three, choose a course that has some online training. You know, it's great if they have the complete course online uh, and then you can study a bit before you come and do the in-person section and then you can review and follow up or if your plans change uh, you don't lose money <laughs> and you can do the whole course online and then number four choose a school that has a variety of styles so you can try out different things and see out what you really like and even if you've done a course already that focused on one style still do it because you're going to discover something new maybe unexpected that you like Number five, choose a course that goes in depth into each subject. Uh, philosophy, anatomy, mm -hmm. you know, are really the, the most things that are missing in so many courses. And going into number six, make sure that you have expert teachers so that there are a variety of teachers who are all experts in their fields. Number seven, make sure that they have an awesome reputation with testimonials that go back for many, many years so that you know that you are getting a quality experience. Number eight, make sure that they have an advanced teacher training and multiple continued education programs. Then you can learn and grow with the school starting from beginner and becoming an expert in your own field. Number nine, great location. Again, this is something that's really exciting because this means that you can go somewhere you've always wanted to go, somewhere exotic, somewhere you've dreamed about where you can go and have this transformational yoga experience. And number 10, something that touches your heart, something that you vibe with, something that makes you feel good or aligns with you whenever you just even see their name and makes you want to be a yoga teacher trainer with them. So thank you guys so much for joining me and Eddie here on this beautiful beach in Copenhagen. And we hope that you make the best decision for yourself 
to go and get the most value out of any yoga teacher training that you choose. And if you would really like to get in contact with us to learn more about these topics and this has helped you in some way, we have a live chat and we have a website that you can check out or you can even schedule a call with us to find out more. And then I'm going to be leading a business essentials course. Uh, I'm really excited to do this. I have so much I want to share with you. Uh, I could talk for a thousand hours about this. I'm going to try to condense it all into a short master class uh, and then go more in depth with it, with the uh, business essentials uh, training uh, where I'm going to share with you all my skills, secrets, knowledge and experience over 15 years, not just for myself, but through all of the other uh, teachers and students I've worked with all over the years, you know, thousands of people, literally. And we can spread this around the world uh, to create uh, abundance of health and wellness for everyone. Namaste. Namaste.